Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday Fruit Clips, my weekly series where I show you certain video clips of some fruity tooty false prophets and false teachers in an effort to push back against these wolves who are trying to hijack the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So we've got some choice selections for you today. Here we go. All right, first up, we are dealing with Julie Green, one of the worst false prophets on social media and an outright liar. This is not a debate. This is fact. She has no fear of the living God. Uh, but today in the first clip that I'm going to show you, Julie is going to really demonstrate to you that she is not a Christian as she hears somebody else on this panel, specifically these two right here, uh, they demonstrate uh, part of the gospel. And you're going to see Julie in this clip. We're going to point out some things. So here we go. I can't do what General Flynn, I can do it. Everybody can pray. That's an action. That's a movement. It's forward. Stacy, about a year ago, made a folder in her phone of pictures of leaders that she had bad feelings towards. She started with Nancy Pelosi. Mm -hmm. Let's hear about that. Like it, it was a change in your heart in praying for those people. Yeah, it was really interesting because every time that I would actually see Nancy Pelosi, this was a couple of years ago, I, I felt actually hate. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I thought, okay, that is not what God wants me to do. And so I really felt like, though, I, I felt actually hate. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought okay, that is not what. So I know, right now I want you to kind of absorb what you just saw. Here is uh, a young lady. I don't know who this young lady is, but she's giving a testimony on how she was dealing with hatred. And we're going to let her finish in just a second. Uh, as she expressed that she felt hatred for Nancy Pelosi, the queen of death here begins to laugh. She thinks that this is funny. She, I think, has a suspicion as to where this is going. But Julie Green is well familiar with these feelings because Julie Green lives her hatred. And you can even reference that video where she accused Nancy Pelosi of drinking children's blood and killing babies, sacrificing to Baal, and uh, right before she said that Jesus Christ said that before the midterms of 2022, Nancy Pelosi would be dead. She said the Lord said that, and it, of course it did not happen. And she's had plenty of other videos where she professes uh, hatred and death to and upon Nancy Pelosi. So your alleged prophetess here thinks that it's funny, and it's very telling. Do you know why she thinks it's funny? Well, because she's not a Christian. Julie Green is not a Christian. She is a cult leader who has attempted to hijack the true gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's really politically motivated. And that's why she is able to not only profess her hate, but to embrace it and to live it and to love it. Me to do. And so I really felt like the Lord actually told me to start praying for Nancy Pelosi. So I took her picture, I put it on her phone, my phone, and every day I would pray for her. And it's interesting because it's every hard, single day, it's every hard morning, to hate someone that you're praying for. Wow. And uh, wow. and it became a really interesting perspective for me. And that is see, Julie's nodding, but she does not agree with this. Right now, what Julie has to do because she's got guests on her program, she's got to pretend, yeah. Yeah, I'm nodding with agreement. That's so true. But she does not agree. And how do you know she doesn't agree? Well, because she continues daily to call down death upon her political enemies. And she says that this is God saying these things. It, it's absolutely atrocious. But this young lady is demonstrating biblically that, yes, we are to pray for our enemies. And it, it's a beautiful thing. I'm not sure who these two people are, but their, uh, their words are correct. And, and they shouldn't, as far as I'm concerned, pray for these two because they should not be in any way. This, and some of you might think that I'm being mean, but this woman, when all is said and done, will have been responsible for shipwrecking the faith of thousands and thousands and tens of thousands when all is said and done. 
This clown over here is responsible for providing a platform to this. And this guy down here, I don't think he knows where he's at. He was, I just did a video demonstrating uh, for, that he said a prayer a while back uh, from an actual cult leader who practices theosophy, which was uh, established by Helena Blavatsky, who is the founder of Theosophy, which is a satanic organization. And he's out there nationally quoting these satanic prayers. And so pray for these two. But I'm going to let her finish up here and just keep your eyes on this. Uh, she's just atrocious. You have hate in your heart. There's nothing that you can do. But by praying, it's like it's impossible to pray and for something not to happen. You know, every time that you pray, something is happening um, in the world and in the atmosphere. And so I just thought that that was a, an interesting thing that the Lord had me do. Now, when I see Nancy Pelosi, I don't feel hate for her. I actually feel compassion. I'm like, Lord, save her. I don't. That is absolutely beautiful. So, wow, I, I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with that young lady. When, when she said, I actually have compassion for her, that is absolutely biblical. And yes, we hate what they're doing, uh, but to pray for them is to be unequivocally obedient to the very words of Jesus Christ and pray for her soul. That's what it's all about, praying for lost souls to come to the gospel of Jesus Christ, not thinking you can call down God uh, to kill all your enemies. And again, if you don't believe me, just tune into her daily fake prophecies where she does it almost daily. And the Lord says this day that someone will die in Washington, D.C. very soon, that I'm dispatching the angel of death to come and eradicate all of uh, those who would try to steal the eagle. It's all about Trump. It's all about America. So again, I thought this was important to show you because she really doesn't know what to do. Uh, she was just faced with true Christianity. And because she's not a Christian, she doesn't know what to do except for pretend to be a Christian. Because she, like I said, she lets that hate rule her and hatred abides in her so now we'll listen to another clip the thing that happened with me is that i saw nasty comments you see trolls you see people that are just purposely out there to get you all the time i used to get really mad about it i used to just get just beat myself up about it i'm like lord i don't understand i'm just doing what you're saying why are they beating me up and he's like pray for him and i'm like no mm -hmm. i don't want to pray for him i'm <laughs> praying for him he's like pray for them and i'm like well i don't want to he goes it doesn't matter if you want to or not it doesn't matter how you're feeling so now a couple of things on this clip. Right, here she's testifying. It's her that's speaking, where she says, God stopped her and said, pray for them. And you heard her own words. She told God, no, I don't want to pray for them. And then she didn't understand why she had to pray for them, which proves that she doesn't understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind as I tell you this. She says she's a prophet, but she also says, if you go to her uh, website, she says that she's a pastor, which again is a complete violation of 1 Timothy 2. That's for another video. But she says that she's a pastor and she had to have this conversation with God. Does that make sense in any way, shape, or form? It demonstrates to her that she's not even a novice. She hasn't even made it to novice level. She is a pre-novice. She says she's a pastor, yet she doesn't know to pray for her enemies. Even the most basic, even a baby Christian would know, like that's one of the first things you learn to pray for your enemies. But she's still having conversations with God. She it was it, it's confusion to her. And and I just thought that was so important to point out because it proves that not only is she uh, not a pastor, not a prophet, but she's not even a novice. It's it's astonishing. But let's let her finish because this gets kind of funny. Okay, so I started to do it. And wow. that started just like with you with Nancy Pelosi, it started changing my heart when people offense and anger and bitterness, that's what our, our enemy wants to do because it's like drinking poison and thinking it's going to affect the person that you're hating or the person that's hating on you. It's just like we had a troll in Florida 
who was on a megaphone and he was saying all these nasty things oh, come now, on. in the middle of a prophetic word. And the Lord said, stop. But I'm like, but you're not done. He goes, stop. And I go, well, why? He goes, deal with it. And I'm like, okay, how? And so I'm, I'm so she had a troll with a megaphone where she was somewhere in Florida preaching. Hmm, who was that? I don't know. Whoops, I guess that was me and uh, Alabama Woodsman. But uh, so she's trying to testify that uh, God helped her through that. Uh, let me let her finish. And he started talking to me and I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? So all of a sudden he said, stop. So I started reaching out there because people were getting upset because of the things that he was saying was not very nice things. And I said, stop getting angry. This is a distraction of the enemy. We're not dealing with a human being. We're dealing with something on the inside of him that is driving him to cause distraction is trying to stop the flow of almighty God. So Julie says that I was not saying very nice things. In fact, she said, we're not dealing with a human. Um, and again, what is she doing? Well, when you think about that situation in Florida, one of the things she could have done as a, what you would think would be a mature believer and leader uh, in the body of Christ, she could have left the stage and come out to address the situation. And she could have resolved it. But here's why she didn't. And here's why, quite frankly, she couldn't. She's a liar. And she wants to continue her lies. She will not explain herself, her false prophecies. So she has to, right here, tell more lies about all of her prophetic lies. And that's all she can do. So that's why, and this is why it's just a vicious circle for her. And she will not be held unaccountable forever. So accomplished in this tent meeting tonight. And so we're going to pray for him. I, I said, I specifically said, I love this person. I don't love what they're doing, but I love this person. And we're just going to pray for the truth. And that's how God dealt with it. And one of my, my team members said, or a couple of them said, it was like all of a sudden, just the glory of God was right there. A uniting came in that room. It was back and track on focus on God. People weren't get, getting, getting offended, and getting angry. That's how you deal with the enemy. You deal with them in love. So again, another lie. Uh, I like how she finished though. That's how you deal with the enemy in love. It's, again, it is just not true when it comes to Julie Green. Go watch all of her videos, even after this one. All she does is call down death. And if somebody can find a video where she is actually praying for her enemies, please. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, certainly uh, take a look at that. But as of today, I've never seen it. So uh, the other part of that was she said that uh, one of her worship leaders or whatever, one of her assistants said that it was like all of a sudden uh, the, the, uh, the glory of God came upon that tent meeting and, you know, uh, everything was, you know, in harmony. I'm paraphrasing what she said. She said something like the glory of God came. Is that true? Now, this was... As it was happening, we were bullhorning. This is their footage. And Julie didn't know what to do. What, what they did here was they kicked into song. They kicked into music to try to drown us out. But it was, you know, at least by what she was saying, the, it wasn't the glory of God that came back upon all of them, not even in the slightest, because she did not know what to do. So she starts dancing around. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. Look at her. She, she is like a deer caught in the headlights. She did not know what to do. That somebody actually showed up in person to call her uh, and Timothy Dixon out on their false prophecies. Neither one of them had the authority or the guts to come out and speak with Alabama Woodsman or I. And so her fake lies that she's telling about this event, and again, this is their footage, it, it's just not true. The only thing that they could do is try to drown us out with music. And we stayed out there about a half hour bullhorning them. But again, look at her. Is she, you know, oh, what do I do? 
I'm going to clap and jump around a little bit. This guy did more speaking than her. She was completely frustrated. She didn't know what to do. So if you go to Matthew chapter 5, you can scroll down and you can read the words of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. And you can go read this for yourself. All right, next up, we've got Sister Barbara. The name of her channel is God's Healer 7. Sister Barbara and her husband, Dan, fancy themselves prophets. They've been around for a long time. I, in the past, I've done a couple of videos on her, although since deleted. But uh, she's got a doozy for you today. Here's her channel. We're on the video tab. You can see that she has 1.5 thousand videos, so 1,500 videos. 38.8 thousand subscribers. And here's her, here's her husband. Now, if you hear me laughing, uh, that's Dan right here. He used to be an accountant until one day he decided, well, I guess he's a prophet all of a sudden. And so he joined his wife at home and they literally, I'm not sure how much they're doing now, but they make all kinds of prophecy videos. But the one we're going to focus on today is this one right here. You can see the title, Vision, Prophecy, The Apocalypse, The Cataclysmic Event, 2021. 12,000 views. She made this video on January 2nd of 2021. Let's listen to what she prophesied. Now, this clip is about three minutes long, but I've sped it up a little bit because she, she kind of talks slow. So I just want to get through this faster. So here we go. This morning at 4 a.m., January 2nd, 21, I asked the Lord if there was anything I needed to see or speak. I heard apocalypse over and over, the apocalypse, the apocalypse, the apocalypse. I heard that over and over. Next, I was shown about five people standing, about five people between the ages of 18 and 25, standing behind a SUV, using it for cover. It was shielding them from attackers' bullets. And as I watched this, I heard the word, the cataclysmic event, the cataclysmic event. Now, Brother Dan uh, has a prophecy out there um, concerning um, a cataclysmic event. Could this be the cataclysmic events that that prophecy is talking about? Okay, then... Um, after I saw all that, I was still praying. Then I got the prophecy. Here it is. This is a hair-raising humdinger for 2021. This is not a good sign for the year. They will run through the streets in panic. As they run, they will see charred bodies. The odor of sulfur will be in the air. They will wander in shock as their eyes behold the destruction. Everything will be rubble and burned. Sudden destruction will have killed many. They have refused me. They did not come to me when I called them. The cities will be plundered and burned. Those remaining alive will cry for death. The children will be missing. Mothers will lay in the streets. Mothers will lay in the streets. They have hardened their hearts. They would not turn away from the evil ways and murders. Their sin and abominations reach the heavens. The ground is soaked with blood, the blood of the innocents, and cries to me day and night. My judgment is perfect. I will repay the evil doers. An arrogant, unrepentant people will know I am the Lord of hosts. I will not be mocked. War is coming to your nation. You have not heeded my warnings. You have ignored my prophets and messengers and tried to silence them. Now you will see my wrath and fury unleashed. I am an all-consuming fire. <laughs> so again, an example of a delusional false prophet. Sister Barbara seems innocent enough, right? She sits in her, uh, in her own home and she gives out these alleged prophecies. Well, clearly... The apocalypse did not happen in 2021. What is your conclusion? Well, she's a false prophet. Now, Sister Barbara is, she's a person, she has had a stroke. And I feel very bad for her. I certainly pray for her. I would encourage you to pray for her. But that doesn't give anybody the excuse to come out and make videos lying 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Barbara, if you're listening, you need to repent of your false prophecies, of your lies in the name of the Most High. Because, again, it is an abomination unto God. Stop doing this. We're in big trouble. I said this before. Um, he's not going to be mocked. He sees all the comments under there, people mocking me and other messengers giving messages like this. So that's very telling. Uh, we see this a lot from the other false prophets. They get mad when people come and leave comments mocking false prophets like herself. And so what does she do? Well, she calls down death. In this case, she called in, she thought she could call in the ultimate death in uh, the way of the apocalypse happening in 2021. It's just amazing. You know, God is not your personal weapon. But that's what the majority of these false prophets do. And they have not the Holy Spirit in them. They don't pray for their enemies. And so when they see these comments, they get all hurt feelings. And uh, their only action is to think that they can pronounce death upon those that left him nasty comments. Now, as I close down this segment, I want to leave you with one couple of thoughts here. For those of you that don't think that somebody like Barbara can do damage, look at the amount of views that she's had in 13 years. She joined in September of 2010. Almost 11.5 million views from her false prophecies. And here's where the damage comes in. Now, whether Barbara knows it or not, and the other false prophets who do this, when somebody comes and watches who they think is a real prophet. And then they watch these prophecies, these prophecies fall to the ground. What happens to many of these followers is that they will quietly walk away from Jesus Christ. And they will conclude in their own minds that, well, this is all fake. I feel foolish. God isn't real. And they do this specifically because of the actions of these false prophets who simply will not shut their mouths. They will not repent of their abominations of speaking things which God hath not spoken. And so this is why false prophecy is so dangerous. And somebody like Barbara is doing a tremendous amount of damage while she makes her living shipwrecking the faith of many. All right, next up we've got John Herlihy. Now, John Herlihy... He is one of those who came and left me several critical messages, which generally I have no problem with, right? I'm not going to get hurt feelings. But he was very critical, uh, said that I was hateful, said many derogatory things about me, uh, to which I, <laughs> I disagreed. But uh, it's only fair that, well, where is he coming from to say those types of things about me and so what I wanted to do was check him out, and I did check him out, and I want to show you today what I found and why I understand why he's coming against me. Now, I'm on his Facebook page, and you can read what it says here, John Hurley, Sonship Ministries International Worldwide Healing, Deliverance, Prophetic Ministry. So he is a prophet, so it's, you're kind of, understanding why he doesn't like me. And if you scroll down and look at some of his information, well, in addition to those titles, uh, he's also a pastor. He's an author, preacher. He's a psalmist, a prophetic worshiper. So a lot of titles. Uh, if you click on his work in education, he's got no schools to show. How did he come to be a pastor? Well, he doesn't say. I guess he just assigned that title to him himself. Now I clicked on John's pictures because sometimes that can be very telling. You can see he's got a lot of posts uh, on you know people like Smith Wigglesworth and uh, Catherine Coleman um, and many others. Uh, I guess if you're familiar with Roberts Learden, Roberts Learden was a fraud. He, he wrote a book called God's Generals where 
a lot of these preachers like John Hurley and Robert Sweerden, they really worship these old time preachers and uh, just really, it's kind of disturbing. There's a channel called Long for Truth and uh, that gentleman and his wife do a, a fantastic job exposing these charlatans. But uh, it didn't work in John's case. John really likes them, uh, but they've been proven frauds. Now, John, it, it really does look like he travels all over the world. But, you know, that's one thing. Is he preaching a true, the true doctrine of the Bible? Here he's referred to as Reverend John Hurley. He by the way, these pictures are on his Facebook, and, and uh, they're apparently flyers that were issued to wherever he was speaking. Here he's referred to as apostle. So, I, you know, John has given himself basically all the titles. Now, the, the first clip we're going to look at, you can see this is on his YouTube page. Look at the title, The Accidental Slaying in the Spirit. I want you... I want you to remember that because it's, uh, it's, you're going to have to make that determination whether this, what you're about to see, was accidental. A commandment from God. It's not an option. And that God says, I command you. I say, look at yourself to be filled. That word filled. Now say it in the original Greek language. Now in this first clip, and this was the first clip that I watched, uh, once you get past john's love or affinity of all things the matrix you can see that he's a showman i'd almost say it's condescending the way that he's talking to these people some might say well he's passionate i disagree i think this is all performance and i'm only going to confirm that as we watch further clips now in this next clip this this is really something you're going to see neo here use his push power and it's quite disturbing Now, as we watch this clip, you can see John, for no particular reason whatsoever, begins to push this guy or just get in his face. Very creepy. And you can imagine where this guy, I'm not sure how well this guy knows Neo here, but he uh, he's trying to get away from him, and he winds up taking a back header over the chairs because of John. And uh, in the words of many, uh, this dude is out cold on the ground. Now, this is the kind of theatrics, this is the kind of circus that uh, is antithetical to solid, holy scripture. You would have never seen this kind of nonsense from anyone, any of the uh, biblical disciples or apostles or even the preachers in uh, the New Testament, and you certainly didn't see this kind of nonsense in the Old Testament. But he's he's apparently knocked out. Now, what you see here is uh, this gentleman's buddies, they're concerned for him, and they come up and they're trying to help him up. And of course, you'd want to be a crazy matrix preacher there he is, and he's continuing with his performance, but you can see as he kind of stops that line, he's, he's looking at this guy, and he's thinking, what did I do? Uh, and again, he, you think he would think, be thinking, you know, what does this have to do with the gospel? But he's not thinking that. He's, uh, he's a little bit worried. And uh, yeah, so this guy who's criticizing my ministry, my... Uh, my internet videos saying that I'm hateful. Look at, look at, this. did you see, did you see this guy's face? Look, this guy is in pain. Thanks, John. Your, your matrix push power sent me flying back over the chairs and I got knocked out on the ground. Thanks a lot, John. And uh, so I, I just wanted to show you this. I'm just kind of doing commentaries. This guy, 
is this guy going to be okay? He's like, man, I didn't sign up for this when I was told. No, look, 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 look at his friends. Look at that. And these guys are like, man, uh, I don't know about uh, Neo here. What kind of nonsense is this? You, you can tell they're not buying the nonsense of this crazy preacher, alleged preacher, and his theatrics. What a load, uh, if you ask me. So we'll just let this play out because I just wanted you to see that uh, the guy is okay. John's laughing. He thinks it's funny. Well, I'm glad he's okay. And this guy, probably because he was paid to be the uh, translator, uh, he's going to get up and finish the job. So good for him. But yeah, so not not real good, John. Now on this next clip I'm going to show you, uh, John is preaching. He's in some Latino country. It might be Mexico. It might be somewhere in South America. I'm not sure. But I want you, I'm going to give you guys some homework here because I need you to really put on your listening ears. These next couple of clips are very disturbing. So this is in the midst of a service. The band is kicking in with music. So give this a listen. Now, maybe some of you might think I'm being mean. That's okay. I don't like this. What you're seeing, th this lunatic has jumped out. There's two men down here. You can't see them, I know, if you do the people. But this lunatic is has jumped on two grown men who are having some sort of a kundalini, violent tremors on the ground. And he has jumped on them. You can see John right here. And he is screaming at them in a repetitive fashion, mas fuego, mas fuego, mas fuego, which means more fire, more fire, more fire. He is, this is Kundalini. This is some sort of a ecumenical Hindu practice because this is nowhere found in the Bible. And you can see them, I'm going to, I'm going to play this again. And I'm, again, I'm going to have you listen to John, listen very carefully because towards the end of this clip, it, I think that uh, John Hurley is possessed. Listen to his voice. So if you rewind and listen to that, he was saying, Recibe ora, recibe ora, which means receive it now. And he just sounds insane possessed. And this is supposed to be a pastor, apostle, prophet, psalmist, all those titles that he gave himself, reverend. And he's a grown man on the floor of this church wrestling with two other men while he calls down fire into them. It is absolutely disturbing. And this is the guy that's criticizing me. Now he doesn't know what to do. He's just sitting there. What an absolute, uh, what, a, what a disgrace. And there he's screaming, Mas fuego en tu corazón, which means more fire in your heart, more fire in your heart. This guy is, is absolutely evil. This is not biblical in any way, shape, or form, but it gets worse. Now, this last clip and the final clip here is the most disturbing. I want you to keep your eye on, on this lovely lady right here with the light green shirt on while she is standing there or dancing there, feeling the music, 
watch John and we'll comment as we go. Now we're going to slow this down. We're going to play this again. You can see this woman dancing and just having a fine time all by herself. And here comes John right here. There's two things to consider here. Number one, John puts his hands on a woman who is not his wife. And the other thing to consider here is John puts his hands on another man's wife. There is every bit of the definition of inappropriate all the way through. She was doing fine, and he comes and grabs her, and then we see the absolute, he walks her over to the chairs, he has no business touching her, and intentionally backs up into the chairs. This lady struck her face on the chair. Look at this. Boom. The other guy tried to save her. Now watch as Captain Doofus gets up. Oh, he's fine. He continues his circus and his performance while the band raises. I wonder this kid up here who's filming this. I wonder what he's thinking. That this preacher, whoever he is, is absolutely nuts. Look at uh, this gentleman right here. He is genuinely concerned. And there's another lady there who's concerned. Wait till they pan back over. As this fake preacher, this jester, and, and believe me, I'm not mincing any words here. This is absolutely atrocious. They're still trying to get this lady up. She does not get back up. So the lady never gets back up. She was genuinely hurt. And, and this guy is ripping on me. So if we go back to that first video, the accidental slaying in the spirit, really, was that an accident? Uh, it wasn't. It seems that John Hurley, he purposefully causes, <laughs> let's just call this spiritual carnage at his so-called meetings. He likes to put on a show. Unfortunately, uh, too many of the locals are getting hurt while he does what he does. So, you know, hey, John, if you're listening, um, I'm feeling fine about what I do because I call out uh, circus performers like you. Now, I haven't heard you make any prophecies. Uh, I just, I don't need to, I guess. I just uh, watch what you do and, and the people that you hurt. And uh, calling down fire, uh, it's all unbiblical. Yours is a ministry that is unbiblical. And I think it's clear to see that it's also inappropriate as you put your hands on other men's wives and put your hands on other women who are not your wife I can tell you most assuredly, and this is not me sounding like or trying to sound like a tough guy, but if any man, preacher or not, came up and interrupted my wife in worship and put his hands on her, you can bet I would be doing my own little matrix and firing up over those chairs and you would see what would happen. I, I, it's just unbelievable that you did this. And again, completely inappropriate. And lastly, the title on this one, Trembling Violently Under the Anointing, I don't think so, and Bouncing While Be, while be Prayed For. Just ridiculous. And Bouncing. Th this certainly was violent, but it was not under the anointing. It's an absolute disgrace. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Thanks for staying with me. 
Don't be afraid to stand against these spiritual bullies, these false teachers and false prophets. Stand in the truth of Jesus Christ and be bold. Until next time.